After studying this module, you shall be able to learn the meaning of investment analysis, know various approaches to investment analysis, understand common errors in investment management. We shall commence this module by studying the meaning of investment analysis. Meaning of investment analysis. Investment refers to the employment of the funds to earn return. Every person wants to have growth in its capital with a higher rate of return than the rate of inflation. Investment represents saving of investors. This means that the investment requires sacrifice of the present consumption to get return in the future. The investment in the securities is done by the investors with the varying degree of risk, return, time duration and various other variables play a great role in deciding their amount of investment. Approaches to the investment analysis. There are four approaches which explain how the investors take investment decisions while considering these various factors. So, investors pursue diverse investment strategies which may to be subsumed under following four approaches which have been briefly explained. First, fundamental approach. Second, psychological approach. Third, academic approach. Four, electric approach. First, fundamental approach. This is perhaps the most commonly advocated by investment professionals. The basic crux of this approach is as follows. There is an intrinsic value of each security which depends upon underlying fundamental or economic factors. The intrinsic value can be established by a penetrating analysis of fundamental factors related to economy, industry and company. Second, at any given point of time, for some securities, intrinsic value will differ from the prevailing market price. Sooner or later, of course, the market price will fall in line with the intrinsic value. Third, an investor would compare the intrinsic value with the prevailing market price while making the investment decision. If the intrinsic value is higher than the market price, an investor can earn superior returns by buying these undervalued securities. Fourth, when the intrinsic value is less than the market price, then it means that it is overvalued securities. So, in this situation, investors should sell these securities. The reason behind this approach is that market cannot adjust prices of all securities of any given industry simultaneously. There is always some scope for off adjustment in the price which may depend upon liquidity of the stock and type of investors in the stock. Second, psychological approach. According to this approach, the prices of the securities are guided by psychology and emotions rather than the reason. It means that stock prices are influenced by the sentiments about a company in the market. If the investors are having positive sentiments in the market, prices of the stock would appreciate even if the company is not reporting good earnings. They continue to invest in the same company with the hope that the worst time is over and they expect good time in the future with the positive sentiments. On the other hand, if the sentiments in the market are negative, the share prices of the company will not appreciate even if it reports good earnings, etc. to the shareholders. Since psychological values appear to be more important than the intrinsic value, this approach suggests that it will be more for a company to analyze how investors tend to behave as the market is often swept by the ways of the optimism and pessimism. The psychological approach is described vividly as the castles in the air. Theory by the Burton G. Mike. All those who subscribe psychological or castle in the air theory use some form of the technical analysis. 
technical analysis is concerned with the study of internal market data in order to develop some trading rules for profit making. The basic premise of the technical analysis is that there are certain persistent and recurring patterns of stock prices movement which can be discerned by analyzing market data. A variety of tools like bar charts, point and figures, average analysis, breadth of market etc. are used in technical analysis. Third, academic approach. Over the last decades, the academicians are studying various aspects of the capital market with the help of sophisticated methods of investigation. The academicians involved in this subject are trying to find various unresolved issues and controversies. Their studies appear to be in substantial support for the following tenets. Stock markets are reasonably efficient in reacting quickly and rationally to the flow of information. Hence, stock prices reflected fair intrinsic value. In other words, when market is efficient, then the market price represent intrinsic value and both become equal. Second, stock price behavior correspond to a random walk. It means that successive price changes are independent of past behavior. Therefore, past behavior cannot be used to predict future price behavior. Third, there is a positive relationship between risk and return in the capital market. There is a linear relationship between risk, systematic and the return. So this approach tries to explain the price movement of the shares using academic reasons. The price movement in the stock may be due to realize of the new development in the company. Price movement due to change in the risk return profile of the investors. Fourth, eclectic approach. The eclectic approach draws on the previous three approaches. The basic premises of the eclectic approach are as follows. First, in establishing benchmarks and basic standards, the fundamental analysis is quite helpful. Since many uncertainties are associated with the fundamental analysis, an investor should not completely rely on the fundamental analysis. Also, excessive refinement and complexity in the fundamental analysis must be dealt with the caution by the investor. Second, technical analysis is useful in predicting future prices of the stock by gauging the prevailing mood of the investors and the relative strength of the supply and demand forces. Since the mood of the investors may change unpredictably, so investors should avoid excessive reliance on the technical analysis. It may be hazardous. Moreover, complicated technical systems should be regarded as suspect because they may represent figments of imagination rather than the tools of the proven usefulness. Third, the market is neither as well ordered as the academic approach suggests, nor as a speculative as the psychological approach indicates. The market is often characterized by many inefficiencies and imperfections, but it seems to react reasonably efficiently and rationally to the flow of information. Similarly, despite many instances of the mispriced securities, there appear to a fairly strong correlation between risk and return. Other than these basic premises of the eclectic approach, there are some operational implications of the eclectic approach. These are as follows. First, the investor should conduct fundamental analysis to establish certain value anchors. Technical analysis should be used to assess the state of the market psychology. Third, fundamental analysis and technical analysis should be used in combination to determine which securities are worth buying, worth holding and worth selling off. Fourth, the investor should respect market prices and should not show excessive zeal in beating the market. Fifth, the investor should accept the fact that 
the search for the higher level of return often necessitates the assumption of a higher level of risk. Now, we shall understand the common errors in the investment management. The investment measurement is difficult and tricky process and therefore it is prone to the following errors in the managing investments. First, inadequate comprehension of return and risk. Second, vaguely formulated investment policy. Third, naive extrapolation of the past. Fourth, cursory decision making. Fifth, simultaneous switching. Sixth, misplaced love for cheap stocks. Seventh, over diversification and under diversification. Eighth, buying shares of similar companies. Ninth, wrong attitude towards losses and profits. And tenth, tendency to speculate. First, inadequate comprehension of risk and return. Investors are very often misled by one or more of the following. Tall and unjustified claims made by the people with the vested interest. Exceptional performance of some portfolio which is attributed mostly to the futurious factors. And false promises made by the operators, tipsters and others. Such expectation in the most of the cases reflect investors' naivety and gullibility. By selling unrealistic goals, investors tend to do things which often give poor results. They may churn their portfolio frequently. They may pay huge premium for speculative and fashionable stocks. They may try to outguess short-term market wings. Second, vaguely formulated investment policy. When an investor does not clearly spell out his risk-bearing capacity and investment policy, it tends to face confusion and this ultimately impairs the quality of investment decisions. Ironically, conservative investors turn aggressive when the bull market is near its peak in the hope of reaping extra gains. So, a well-articulated investment policy followed consistently over a period of time can save the investors from disappointment. Third, naive extrapolation of the past. The investors generally believe in a simple extrapolation of the past trends and events and do not effectively incorporate changes into expectations. This often turns out to be genesis of an embarrassing forecast for future. Fourth, cursory decision making. When investors tend to take decisions on the partial evidence, unreliable hearsay, casual tips by the brokers, friends and others, their decision making is characterized by a great deal of curiosity. They may also tend to follow others because of the temptation to ride the bad wagon. Very often, they commit errors in the decision making. Fifth, Simultaneous switching. Simultaneous switching means investors switch over from one stock to another by buying and selling more or less simultaneously. But the right time of buying new stock may prove right time for selling another stock. Sometimes investors follow others blindly and they lack of the confidence in their own judgment. This may bring desired results. Sixth, Misplaced love for the cheap stocks. Investors often have a weakness for the cheap stocks. This is revealed in the following behavior. When an investor buy a stock which is on its way down because of belief that a falling share will be good bargain. Second, they tend to buy more of the same stock when its price falls in a bid to lower their average price. Seventh, over diversification and under diversification. Many times investors do not understand the principle of diversification and its benefits in terms of risk reduction. A number of individual portfolios seem to be highly under diversified, carrying an unavoidable risk exposure. Eighth, buying shares 
of familiar companies. Very often investors buy shares of the companies which they are familiar. For example, medical practitioner may prefer to buy shares of the pharmaceutical companies. This means they derive psychological comfort by investing in the familiar companies. But they must realize that in the stock market there is hardly any correlation between the goodwill of the company's product and the return on its equity. Ninth, wrong attitude towards losses and profits. Many times the investors tend to let the losses run and cut profits short rather than to cut the losses short and let the profits run. This arises out of the disclination to admit mistakes. For example, if price of a stock fall, the investors still buy more of the stock to lower average price. And if price covers due to the favorable condition, they tend to dispose of the share when the price is more or less equal to the original purchase price even though there may be fair chances of further increases. Tenth, tendency to speculate. The tendency to speculate is common, particularly when the market is buoyant and ecstatic. Investors should try to resist this. It may be difficult for the investor to follow this advice, but in the long run, investor will be likely to be better off if he refrains his speculative instincts. Now we shall recapitulate what we have learned so far. Investment refers to the employment of funds to earn return. Every person wants to have growth in its capital with a higher rate of return than the rate of inflation. Psychological approach. The price of the securities are guided by psychology and emotions rather than reason. It means the stock prices are influenced by the sentiments about the company in the market. Academic approach. Over the last decades, the academicians are studying various aspects of the capital market with the help of sophisticated methods of investigation. Eclectic approach. The eclectic approach draws on all the previous three approaches in establishing benchmarks and basic standards. The fundamental analysis is quite helpful. Since many uncertainties are associated with the fundamental analysis, an investor should not completely rely on the fundamental analysis.